absolute viewpoint, practical viewpoint. There are different viewpoints from which an object or situation can be presented. When it's presented from one particular viewpoint, it is called Nye. Jameson lies down seven categories of Nye, which can be broadly classified into two categories. One, absolute viewpoint. Two, practical or worldly viewpoint. When an object is described and is original in its adulterated form, <coughs> it is the soul in its truest form. It is pure, unadulterated, blissful consciousness. It is full happiness, knowledge, perception, etc. The worldly soul is however found in an unhappy <laughs> and ignorant state. To describe it in that form, the soul is smeared with karma. Karma is like clouds covering the sun within. But of these viewpoints, both of these viewpoints are correct in their own contracts and should therefore be taken into consideration for reaching the right conclusion. If one adopts only the absolute viewpoint, <coughs> he would conclude that the soul is immutable and uncomparable. As such, he would set to believe that devotion, detachment, restaurants, etc. will have no avail and would therefore give them up. Resorting to the absolute viewpoint, to the exclusion of the practical viewpoint, thus leads to a elusive conclusion. It's not valid either. What does anyata mean according to Jainism? The Jain concept anyata relates to thinking that we have a sensitive identity that may be associated with us belonging to a community, <coughs> a family, a workplace, or any other group, for example. Anyata means that we should not identify ourselves with these things. They are temporary and part of samsar. The truth is that nothing is mine. We are the soul and only the soul. The body and the soul are different and separate from each other. The body is, <coughs> is inert, but my soul is the very embodiment of consciousness. The soul is imperishable. It will not die. The body, of course, burns and becomes ashes. Agonies affect only the body and not the soul. I am not the body. The body is not mine. Under this reflection, one thinks that one's own soul is separate from any other objects or living beings of the world. Even his physical body is also not his. At the time of death, <coughs> the soul leaves the body behind. The body is matter, while the soul is all consciousness. The soul, therefore, should not develop an attachment to worldly objects, other living beings, or his physical body. He should not allow himself to be controlled by the desires, greed, and urges of his own physical body. Jain religion puts a significant emphasis on the thought process of a human being. A person's behavior and actions are the reflections of the internal thoughts day in and day out. It is not the action but the intention behind the action that results in the accumulation of karma. Hence, one should be very careful about his thoughts, how he thinks, and the subject matter of his thought. To make room for pure thoughts and to drive out the evil ones, Jane recommends reflecting 
are meditating upon the following 12 thoughts or biomanas. The 12 biomanas <laughs> described here are the subject matters of one's meditation and how to occupy one's mind with useful, religious, beneficial, peaceful, harmless, spiritual, advancing, karma presenting thoughts, preventing thoughts. They cover a wide field of teachings of Jainism. They are designed to serve us as aids to spiritual <laughs> progress, produce detachment, and lead the aspirants from the realm of desire to the path of renunciation. They also are reflections upon the fundamental facts of life intended to develop purity of thought and sincerity in the practice of religion. Proven K. Chow, Jane Study Center of North Carolina. What is Arvata Vaivana? The Hindu word Arvata means separate or different, and Yata Vaivana refers to contemplation of the fact that the soul is different or separate from the body. Under this reflection, one thinks that his own soul, separate from all worldly objects as well as his physical body, the soul is all consciousness and imperishable. It does not die. The body, on the other hand, is matter and perishable. The body will die someday. At the time of death, the soul leaves the body behind and travels <coughs> alone to its next destination. Likewise, all <coughs> worldly objects are perishable. At the time of death, nothing accomplishes accompanies the soul. Everything is left behind. That's why the soul has, has an attachment with the body and the worldly objects. Why should I allow myself to be controlled by the desires, greed, and urges of my physical body? Such contemplation results in developing detachment from the body and the worldly objects, which is essential for progress on the earth to attaining moksha liberation. Liberation cannot be attained without practical, total detachment of the soul from the body. Anyata Vyanta is thus indistinguishable to attaining moksha. For Reflection by Sihal Shal. Reflection may seem like a simple word, but it is quite powerful and meaningful. Reflection is defined as some act of long connection and self-reflection. The most common time of reflection is probably during New Year's. Oftentimes, we reflect upon the past year and think of new goals and resolutions for the upcoming year. Although this time of reflection comes once a year, this act should be an ongoing mindset in our everyday life. In Jainism, there are certain reflections that we can try to implement in our own daily life and set each day as a new beginning with new goals and new reflections. This simple act of reflection helps minimize our karmas and helps bring positively, positively to our minds and to our surroundings. Although there are 12 reflections, there are four additional or auxiliary reflections that one can implement daily. The four reflections are friendship, appreciation, compassion, and neutrality. Whether we are in school 
or in our professional life, we are constantly meeting new people and forming various friendships. Yet it is part of human nature to not get along with every single person or things may happen that may break our friendship. Although one may go through these struggles, it is important to keep the friendships intact and avoid becoming enemies. The formation of, of an enemy can be quite dangerous and can only bring negative thoughts. Lord Mahavir once said, We must be friends to all living beings. This can be translated as living good thoughts and speech to every person will only create a positive mindset. Of course, you don't know how to be best friends with every person you meet, but it should be a goal to be friendly and at least with wish well for each person, both mentally and physically. The last day of Purushana is the simple of forgiveness, as forgiveness as we say. Makama Duka to each person, especially our enemies. Instead, take each day as a reflection and think only good thoughts about each person. The second reflection is appreciation. We grow up in a good and stable family, which is a true blessing. When looking at the hungry children growing up in the streets of poverty, it truly is an eye-opener to see how lucky we are to have this human life. We should appreciate our life. Oftentimes we get tangled in our daily stress, problems, or selfish desires, but when looking at the bigger picture, we are quite lucky compared to most others. Addition, when we hear about the success of others or our friends, how often are we truly happy for that person? Instead, does the thought of jealousy ever come across our minds? Of course, it is human nature to feel jealous, but it is also one of the most destructive feelings to have as well. It can not only hurt the feelings of others, but can break friendships and ultimately destroy oneself. Instead, Reflect on each day with happiness and love for each other. Truly think how lucky we are to have this life and appreciate not only our own life, but also the people who have impacted us. Our family and friends do have an impact on each one of us and makes us the person that we are today. Thus, we can only be happy for the success of others and truly appreciate each person for the impact they have on, a, on one's own life. The third is compassion. Compassion is an undefined reflection of our actions. We have two choices. Lead each action with a compassionate and helpful thought or lead each action with a harmful thought. The key to a successful path in life is compassion. It can not only lead one in the right direction, but bring happiness, forgiveness, and patience. The very last reflection is to remain neutral. How often do we get disappointed if a situation is not in our favor? During this moment, we often get overcome with anger, unhappiness, and disappointment, and seem to find a source of blame or reasoning. On the contrary, when a happy or successful moment is achieved, how many times do we take the time to be thankful and blessed instead of becoming overwhelmed with every emotion during during each every situation, one should think they, that they, they tried the best they could and should remain neutral, instead of becoming too involved in one direction 
or the other. By following this form of reflection, we are giving our minds mental peace as well as achieving equanimity and will help reduce most of our passions. One famous Jain stream that was written by Gardab Charbadaja is called Satari. This song is the symbol of friendship that is sung by Jains across the world. Twelve Contemplations One Impermanence of everything, that is, contemplation on the fact that everything in this world, including religions, are transient and fleeting. Two, helplessness against our karma. The soul is helpless against its own karma. Three, solidness, solidness of the soul, that is the appearance of the fact that I am alone in this world and alone will suffer and enjoy the consequences of my karma. This is solidness. Four, distinctiveness of the self from everything else. The knowledge of this world, my kingdom, my body, my mind, all are distinct from myself, the soul. Five, invalid, invalidity of transmigration, reflection of the fact that the soul is ensnared in the continuous and sorrowful cycles of birth and death and cannot attain <coughs> true happiness till it ends this cycle. Six, the nature of the universe, that is, count, com, contemplation on the fundamental truth about the universe, that it is beingness, uncreated and operates according to its own laws. There is no divine omnipresent being responsible for the universe. 7. Impunity of soul or account or is association with karma. 8. <coughs> Un influx of karma, reflection of the fact that inflow of karma is the case, is the cause of my mix of my mundane existence and there is no liberation as long as my soul is associated with karma. Nine, secession of karmic inflow, that is, contemplation on the stoppage of karmic inflow by cultivating necessary virtues. Ten, sh shedding of karma, this is the shedding of dissolution, destruction, or karmas by penances. The path of righteousness Reflections on the true nature of the path to righteousness based on the teachings of the Jains through virtuous practices like ahimsa and non-attachment. 12. Reality of finding the right path to enlightenment. Reflection on the fact that enlightenment is very rare and many souls are deprived of moksha or liberation due to, to failure to reincarnate as a human and attain true teachings of the Jains. Reflections. It seems like this wisdom has been around for thousands of years. The modern day maxim, which I love, the more attention you pay to something, the more attention it pays to you. Imagine you have an inner garden within. Most people never even think they even have an inner garden. 
I have a good friend of mine, and I once told him about the inner garden. His response was, what garden? Can you imagine you were born with a magnificent garden, yet over time, due to neglect, and not even knowing the garden exists? There's nothing but rocks, boulders, and weeds. Contemplation allows one to clear their rocks, boulders, weeds in one's self. But cultivating the J. Sachit Anand. This divine expression has been around for thousands of years. It means J. Glory to Sat. Truth. Chit. Consciousness. Anand. Bliss. Truth is the consciousness of bliss. When the mind is absorbed in truth, the consciousness <coughs> will be in bliss. When man knows the truth practically, one knows the soul practically. One lives in the center of the hurricane. This is the goal for all sentient beings to become one again with their soul. <laughs> the goal is to cultivate the garden within. If I do so, one has the opportunity to give fruits to the world. Not only that, but one realizes one's true nature. One becomes united with its true essence. Nothing can be greater than that.